Hi guys, this is Mike from Products, and I want to talk a little bit today about the basics of DLP. And so with DLP, typically you're looking for sensitive information inside of, of content. So let's say we have a file here. I want to look for a, a few things. So one would be personally identifiable information. That is obviously something you should care about and is sensitive. A payment card information, PCI type uh, regulations around that, uh, or uh, personal health information. Uh, but there's many other different types, so we'll put etc. here as well for different types of ways you want to identify that something is, is sensitive and you may want to apply a different type of action from a protection perspective. And so say I have this, this content that's sensitive, uh, most of the time when you're talking about DLP, you're talking about a vertical that's more regulated, something like a healthcare uh, or financial services company. And so in that case, you might already have a Avantu or some other type of a DLP solution uh, that's already been in place. And so you, the rules you have may already have been tuned. And so from that perspective, you want to import those rules and, and apply the security uh, to endpoints and, and to cloud. Uh, so you can do that. Other times you want uh, different types of uh, libraries where I have uh, different sets of, of rules uh, that I can just match upon if uh, maybe I haven't really tune my rule base and aren't as uh, adept into uh, the development of these uh, these rules and processes. But from a perspective of identifying information, there's a couple places to look for it. So inside of uh, cloud applications, things like Office 365, maybe some uh, enterprise file sync and share application like Box or, or even Salesforce, from a CRM perspective, uh, there can be data inside of it that's sensitive. And you may want to look for a couple different things. And so uh, let's say I have this file here and it's inside box and I share it outside to an external party. That might be all right, but it may not be all right if I find uh, personal uh, healthcare information inside of, uh, inside of that file. And so you want something that can control that and in certain situations be able to block that. And so to accomplish this, uh, typically you connect in something like an API. And so APIs uh, can connect to uh, Cloud Access Security Broker solutions and monitor what's going on inside of the application. And that's great. Uh, but what about devices? And so let's say I have a uh, PC here, and it's a managed device, and it can connect up and, and download and author different types of content. And let's say I have an iPad. That's an unmanaged device that I'm allowing in my organization. I might want to do different policies for this. It might be OK to take a file here and upload or download it to, uh, to Box in this case. Uh, but that might not be OK for this unmanaged PC. Uh, or mobile device. And so from that perspective, you want to insert something that is typically a proxy-based solution to look at uh, these different types of, of DLP mechanisms and apply an action. So from an upload perspective, it might be to protect the content before it gets into the cloud so that it's already encrypted, for example. Uh, it could be outright block, could be uh, encrypt the content as it comes down to the mobile device. So then it's protected and it's requires a password to access that, uh, that content, or it could be outright things like DRM. So there's a number of different flavors you might want to do here. Uh, typical solutions involve both of these things. So you want a solution that does both API and proxy, so you can provide that really real-time protection from a proxy, as well as this more kind of out-of-band type protection that you get from an API. Uh, so without both of those, you're kind of uh, at, the, at the whim, let's say, uh, of the, the cloud solution, where it's trying to tell you that something's changed, and you know if, if you if this API isn't up to snuff from a perspective of, of scanning and um, and processing times, you may have something that is you know not as near real time as you'd hoped. So you combine both these things to uh, result in a hybrid CASB or something that Gartner calls a multi-mode CASB, which should uh, be really something that you're looking for when you're evaluating uh, things like like DLP and matching and whatnot. So uh, from a high level, uh, typically people already have DLP and they want to import it. Uh, or they have libraries that they want to uh, include. And so BitGloss offers a, a number of different types of libraries that, uh, and importing capabilities that you can include for things like patterns in the US, things like patterns in the UK and in EMEA and whatnot and across uh, Asian countries. So feel free to come check it out and we're hoping that uh, you can learn more.